Good morning and welcome to Freedom Church. I'm Liam and this is my wife, Sarah. We are so pleased that you could join us today in this service this morning. Deuteronomy 6.5 says this, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give to you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road when you lie down and when you get up. This passage tells us of the importance of modelling our relationship with Jesus to our children. Having recently become a father to our little boy Nathaniel, I'm now asking myself, am I the man I want my son to become? Am I showing him my relationship with Christ and my dependence on him? Let us pray. Lord Heavenly Father, we come to worship you today with all of our hearts. We ask that you speak into our lives as we listen to your message. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In this week's interview, Karen speaks with Oleg and Veronica from Ukraine on how God has spoken to them and how he has changed their lives. Over to Karen. Um, Oleg and Veronica, I want to thank you so much for giving your time um, to have a chat with us. And uh, it was lovely, it's just so that people know that uh, Paul and I came over to you, to your church in Poltava, Ukraine, in the east, eastern Ukraine. Um, we came over, I think, November, December of 2019. Yeah. With a we had a most amazing time. With you, with you guys and your church and with the people who came and just in, in your town, we had um, a really amazing time and the presence of the Lord and what he's doing is so great. And I do thank you that we can have a chat. Um, it would be lovely for people to know if you could explain to us what life is like for the average family in Poltava and, and what are the struggles? What is life like on a daily basis? Over to you. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to share and to fellowship. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you, Paul and Karen, for your ministry in Poltava. Yes. It was a great time and the uh, Holy Spirit came and filled uh, all the people who came and we can see the results. And uh, Pastor Vadim and Tanya, they also send their greetings and they thank you for Thanks, your ministry. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, we live in Poltava, Ukraine, and uh, I think the needs of uh, our families here are the similar needs to any families. Mm -hmm. But I think the situation in Ukraine is uh, specific because we are still in war uh, with Russia and the war is going on and every day uh, people die. And because of that, we have some problems because many people, they move moving from the war zone, that area, and uh, we encounter many of those people here. And uh, we need to minister to them because they are broken and they lost their homes. Uh, some of them lost their families. Uh, some of them uh, don't have jobs. And uh, also uh, what we encounter is the fear that people uh, have inside, uh, all people in Ukraine, because they anticipate the worst, you know, uh, that can happen uh, with Ukraine. So I think this is the problem that we have. Another problem that we had is the coronavirus. I think everybody in the world now experiencing the consequence of this. And uh, because of that coronavirus, Ukraine, Ukrainian economic was weak, but because of that coronavirus, it's really struck Ukraine and many people, they lost their jobs. And uh, even uh, they didn't have anything to eat. We heard about some people in Poltava that uh, was starving even. Mm. So it was really difficult situation still uh, for some people because of that lockdown. And they provided some help, food help for them, uh, to the for families that needed some food. So we helped them. Uh, and um, uh, it's amazing that God, you know, despite all these problems, it's amazing to see how God is moving in Ukraine. And 
amazing when you face difficulties you see the god's greater greater um, his goodness more and um, i want to say that um, church here in ukraine uh, faced not only difficulties but we faced goodness of god his miracles during this uh, a time of quarantine especially and we believe for the great future for ukraine and we believe for revival so it's uh i believe that all over the world the churches uh, uh goes through the transformations and god is changing the lives of people and the hearts so we expect that God is at work and he will do his miracles in our lives. That That's is amazing. And during this time um, with the virus around, what does church look like for you? And what um, have you done to you? Yeah. yeah, we needed to make this decision as many other churches in the world to uh, stop uh, meeting together as a church and to start online service services mm -hmm. uh, praise god we had some experience of doing that before so it wasn't like a struck for us but uh, still we uh, started to do it and we were improving and uh, the amazing thing that we noticed that uh, uh, we have like every week we could uh, do this facebook or youtube uh, church service we have more and more viewers and at some point it's crossed the 1000 uh, view views and more so we praise god for that so many people could join us even from other countries and uh, you know celebrate together so it was a great time and another thing that we noticed is the anticipation like everybody will say when are we going to meet together again like yes when when this time yes. will come so people were so anticipating this offline <laughs> church that when we started to do it in June, like many people, new people came to the church. Uh, yeah, we were afraid actually that people will not uh, come back to the uh, temples. And we were praying. And you know what? I was thinking people wanted to uh, finish this quarantine and just to go to the restaurant to have the cup of coffee. And they were expecting when they will do this again. And I said to my friends, I pray that this our f feeling, desire to go to the church would be more than just to go to the restaurant to have a cup of coffee. Um, so, and now one month, right, uh, we are uh, gathering at the church in our temple and we see how many people, new people came to church and we praise God for this. That's so, amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. Can I um, ask you a personal question, please? <clears throat> because, or to, to get personally, so people, we can hear what, a, what it's like. In a, if you take a family, one family in Poltava, where are they likely to live? Mm. What is their living standards? What mm -hmm. are they able to do or not be able to do? um if you could just give an example of that and the sort of things that go on in a home and maybe what happens with jesus and maybe if you're able to include in that your own personal story mm -hmm. over to you uh, yeah um majority of families in poltava and in ukraine they live in flats and uh, some of them their apartments, right? apartments yeah some of them they inherited these apartments from their parents and some people rent um the difficulty they encounter and the struggle is of course the financial because uh, in ukraine the jobs are low paid so people could get like 200 or 300 dollars per month which is not enough to live per month so this is the main struggle especially for men and for women and um, but we believe that god is providing we believe that god super, we have so many testimonies how supernaturally god just providing like some people say that uh, like young families uh, 
they were looking for the flat to live and they have like little child just born and they didn't have place to live and somebody would just say like you can come and live in my house or my flat because i'm moving and you just pay just bills you don't pay rent so amazing things like that would happen uh, yeah i want uh, i want to add to this that um yeah of course um the life of the families in ukraine really uh, diff- uh different from uh the style living as you have in england but um Mm, and I want to add as the mother, right, during the quarantine, we all the mother, mothers all over the world, we face difficulties, mm-hmm. especially with homeschooling and with kids 24 hours, seven days a week. And um, in Ukraine, it was difficult because um, uh, the technology and Internet and computers not so um, uh, Developed. developed here in Ukraine than in England, for example. And of course, it was challenges for many families if they have only one phone and four kids and they need to watch their school program. It was difficulties, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, as you know, and I think you've heard that during the quarantine, <clears throat> the um, home um, violence grew up a lot. In some countries, 30 percentage. In some countries, 50 percentage just grew up. And it's sad to hear, actually, because the family should be the place of blessing. We should enjoy time with the kids, with the families. And it, it is so sad to hear that statistics of the world says that the violence during the quarantine uh, just um, uh, grew up amazingly, you know, a lot. And it was like pandemic within the pandemic in the families. And this is the sorrow of my heart to hear this, um, uh, to hear this news. And, you know, uh, what I would like to share today with all of us, when we look at our children, what we expect from them, when we look at our children, what we want uh, uh, to see in their lives one, how we look at our children. And you know what God gave me as the revelation? When we look at our children, we should see them as our inheritors, right? And I don't, and I don't mean only finances, bank accounts, uh, houses, uh, or something like financial um, part of this. But when we look at our children, we should look at them as our spiritual inheritors. And for us and for all parents all over the world, it's quite a challenge actually today. What, am I, what will I give to my child as the spiritual inheritor, inheritance? What I will give them? What example I uh, show to my children? What prayer? What what revelations? What uh, what ministry I will give to them as my inheritor? And I think this is the biggest challenge for families, for mothers, and parenthood all over the world to, world today. We should think about our children as our inheritors and spiritual inheritors. I believe in generational call. I believe that the churches should should uh, bring uh, the new people in the church, but also we need to save people, not only somewhere, but we need to save people, first of all, in our homes. So I want to encourage everybody uh, in their houses uh, to be the light of the world. Just be the light to your children, to your husbands, to your wives. Just be the light and think about what I can give to them in a spiritual way, what they will face. Uh, so this is my just uh, small revelation about what should be families look like. Uh, yes, in Ukraine and in England and in the United States, everywhere. We need to be the people who bring the blessings to our homes. That's wonderful. Another, str- another struggle and difficulties that we encounter in Ukrainian families are addictions. And uh, many people, they addicted to alcohol or drugs. 
and yeah. it's a real pro problem especially in villages our church is missionary church and we plant in churches in different towns and villages we have more than 40 different churches there and and we encountered this problem because of hopelessness. People just start to drink and take take drugs. And um, another problem is uh, corruption in Ukraine. And the uh, justice system doesn't work. So even if you want to get justice, you won't get it. And uh, the conclusion that we can make that uh, in spite of all, all these uh, hardships, difficulties, and hopelessness, uh, there is one way to go and come to God, you know. And I think uh, many people just come to God because they realize there is no help except of God. Mm -hmm. And we really need to uh, use this opportunity to share good news, uh, to preach the gospel, because people are in desperation, some people, and they come to God and they are ready, you know. Um, today, I've, uh, on the Facebook, my friend posted uh, a song, very beautiful song, and the words of the song was like, all my life you have been faithful, God. All my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. And I want to say that I can, uh, my life just sum summed up in this song.
and um, we want to say that we saw God, that he is the God of miracles and wonders. And doesn't matter what is going on in the lives, financial troubles, health problems, uh, problems uh, with um, relationship, doesn't matter what problems we face. If we go in the presence of the Lord, if we go to Him for the help, He will always be faithful to us. And I just want to today just to share my testimony a little bit, how God healed me. Um, When I was 23, today I'm 37. When I was 23, the doctors put the diagnosis to me, uh, multiple sclerosis. And you know, when you've heard this diagnosis in when you're 23, first uh, emotions that you experience is just shock uh, and fear, of course, what will happen next and how long I will live life. And I remember when I uh, came from the appointment with the doctor and I sat in my car and I was praying to God. It wasn't like a panic in my, in my heart, but I was asking the Lord, what next? And he came to me and he said, you have another destiny. You will have another destiny. And I knew that it wasn't my emotions. It was not me that I was speaking to myself. It was just sweet God's voice that you will have another destiny. You will not die from this uh, uh, disease. And the doctor said that we don't have cure from this disease. You know, this disease is not uh, curable, curable, yes. Um, But I said, Lord, you said that I will have another destiny. Mm -hmm. Uh, And uh, I took some medicine that helped me with the headaches and with my, my health problems. But when I took this medicine, I said, Lord, I know that this is not my cure, but you are my cure. I know that you can do the miracle for me. And um, uh, for half of the year, like six months, I took some medicine. And each day I felt myself better and better and better. And when I finished um, the um, uh, uh, treatment, the doctor said, when you feel worse, when you feel bad, uh, you will come back to us and we will give you another medicine. So a few years passed by and I became pregnant and doctors said we can't uh, uh, allow you to be pregnant because you have this diagnosis. We don't know what will happen during the pregnancy with you. We will not allow you like to have this pregnancy. And they said, oh no, will you allow or not? I will have this pregnancy and we will deliver this child. And, and they said, okay, but you need to check your head your brain uh, before we will take care about you i said okay so my testimony is this when i checked my brain it was totally clear it was totally clear no damages in my brain and they took off this diagnosis from me and now I, i'm 37 and i we have two kids and uh, god is our healer so this is a small testimony of what god did so if you face any problems in your life especially with covid if you have fear of uh, to have uh, this disease in your life don't be afraid never be afraid of anything because our god is god of wonders and i am the wonder uh, of his uh, goodness, actually. I am like, live, lo- uh, live wonder. And if God did it in my life, he can do anything uh, in your life. So be encouraged, church. We just want to encourage you and say, don't be afraid to come back to the church. Amen. No Amen. way. Just when the time will come, just run into the temple because every, um, every time when God's people didn't have opportunity to go to the temple. It was um, not blessing for them. It was just um, the problem and uh, curse curse for the nation. So just pray and wait for the for the day when you will have opportunity to go uh, to the temple and pray to the Lord. And don't be afraid. Of any disease, God is our healer. Amen. 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 <laughs> so, a little testimony. Wonderful. Guys, yes. thank you so much.
It's been Thank so you. lovely to t have time with you and I'm really moved as I was when we were in Ukraine. There were times when I just sat and cried. Something yeah, about so. the God spirit. So thank you so much. Thank Amazing. you so much. Thank yes, you. you. Yeah, and thank everyone you. in the church and all those around you because as you say, he, he comes to transform lives. Yes. And uh, may those miracles and his goodness and his love set so many people free and yes. change your nation. Thank you, Oleg and Veronica, for sharing your testimony with us. It really highlights the love of Jesus and the wonderful miracles he performs in our lives. So let's hand over to Paul. Welcome. My name is Paul and I'm one of the leaders of Freedom Church. I'm married to Karen and we have four children and six grandchildren. The two youngest are three months and six months old. We're looking after them quite a lot at the moment as their parents are key workers. And it's just remembering and learning so much more about the second lot of children that we have. We're just starting a relationship with the two youngest, learning the difference between a cry and a moan, working so hard to get one of those lovely smiles from each of them, talking silly language and even blowing raspberries with them. It just takes me back to how our Heavenly Father is with us as we start to build a relationship with him. He loves us unconditionally, encouraging us, looking after us, answering our moans, hearing our cries. When we come to know God as our Heavenly Father, in the beginning we are just babies. He answers our cries. He is there by his Holy Spirit, guiding us, shepherding us. What a wonderful picture the young dads gave us on Father's Day. And then Jake, going even further last week. Both talks are still on our YouTube channel, worth a listen if you haven't already heard them. I remember reading a story of a young daughter who was about six years old, asking, Daddy, can I make you a cup of coffee? Sweetheart, Dad replied, the kettle is very big and dangerous. With all that hot water, I don't think it's safe for you. Oh, OK, Daddy. Can I carry a cup for you? And how his hands guided hers as both of them carry the cup to the table. Encouraging, but very protecting. So our Heavenly Father is with us. But of course, ten years later, she should be able to do it unassisted. God loves us unconditionally. And he loves us so much that he won't leave us where he finds us. God is a miracle worker. Miracle worker, it starts at home. We are called children of God. John 1-2 Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. That's you and I. Last time I spoke, I told you how our oldest grandchild is going to senior school. And now is the time that all the self-worth his parents have poured into him will stand the test of his peers. I remember when one of our children was humiliated by a teacher in their first week at senior school. And now we had to listen, protect and also train and encourage them how to handle such situations. And again, when the, in the first week of senior school, another was bullied. And how we led them to honestly express their pain and fears to Jesus before, forgive, for, before forgiving the person and explaining how to respond to them from now on. Incredibly, three years later on, they are playing on the same winning sports team, great teammates. 
This was a time for them to grow and mature. A time to learn new ways, God's ways, and grow in their understanding and praying before making their own decisions. We could only pass on what we ourselves had learnt. Not to take offence, but to walk in the ways that Father God leads us with his love. Forgiveness, maturity, growth. For us trying to become more like Jesus each day. Then later at senior school came the time for them to decide which subjects to major in. For all of them, it was a difficult choice as they loved so many different subjects and to restrict it down from a wide choice to major on a few. We asked the question, have you prayed? This was certainly preparing them for an even narrower choice when they had to decide about university and a career. The decisions get harder, the consequences bigger. More prayer. God doesn't want us to stay children. He wants us to grow in our faith into maturity. I love to ask this question of people. How old are you in your faith? Not in your age in years, but your age in your faith. Not how long you've been a Christian, but how like Jesus are you? I know God wants us to grow. He wants us to mature. He wants us not to be offended. Not to be petulant or sulky. Not to cut people off. Not to react to them, but respond from a place of maturity. To forgive and encourage people. That doesn't mean that we have to trust everyone, especially those who have broken our trust. Trust is given freely, but if you break it, it is costly for it to be earned back. You see, Father God wants to bring about miracles in our lives. But there comes a time when he doesn't respond to us like he did initially. You see, it's a time for us to grow. Our spiritual age will be determined by quite a few factors. Here are just some of them. Our faith in him, our relationship with his is he Lord of our lives? Our ability to forgive others. How much time we spend reading his word. Our decisions. Asking him before we do something. Making him Lord of that choice. Humility. Owning up to our own wrongdoings without justifying them how we pray and allow him to work in our lives, how to handle hurts. Do we give it to him or carry it and make poor decisions out of the result of it? You see, he wants to do miracles in our lives. He is the God of miracles who loves us dearly. And he is a miraculous God. Can I state that? Sentence again, miracles start at home. Jürgen Klopp said in his first interview as manager of Liverpool Football Club, this is what he said, we have to change from doubter to believer now. And look what happened to Liverpool Football Club. They've just won the Premier League. It's been 30 years since they last won it. You see, we have to change from doubter to believer now. It's not about winning a premiership title. It's far more important than that. Who we are at home matters more. Our children are our inheritors. What 
are we leaving them? Not financially, but spiritually. Are we leaving them with a bad temper? Or do we always respond in love? Are we complaining or are we praising people? Do we have difference or are we able to affirm who they are? How have they seen us handle our relationships, our close relationships? Do we take from a relationship or do we give? How do they hear us speak of others? Do we build people up or do we tear them down? Where do we draw our comfort from? We need to be the light of the world first in our homes. To be the light to your husband, your wife, your children to grow into maturity. We will always be God's children, but we cannot go on with childish behaviour. If you ever say, if I knew then what I know now, I would have made a different choice. The good news is you're learning. Come across this Hebrews 5.12 and it says this in the Message Bible. I have a lot more to say to you about this, but it's hard to get across to you since you've picked up this bad habit of not listening. By this time, you ought to be teachers yourselves. Yet here I find you need someone to sit down with you and go over the basics on God again, starting from square one. Baby's milk when you should have been on solid food long ago. Milk is for, for beginners, inexperienced in God's ways. Solid food is for the mature who have some practice in telling right from wrong. So with the revelation given to us by Veronica from Ukraine, may I encourage us all we need to go on maturing in Jesus Christ for our children. Not only will our relationship with Christ mature and deepen, but our children will be the beneficiaries too. You see, for we serve the God of miracles. And miracles start at home. Can I just leave you? with the question, what are you leaving your children to inherit? Thank you. Thank you, Paul, for that great message. Proverbs 24.32 says, I applied my heart to what I observed and I learned a lesson from what I saw. Lord, may we have a heart that wants to learn May we learn from our situations so that we may grow into maturity and become more like you. Amen. Now, over to our final worship song.
If you have enjoyed today's service, or if it's has spoken to you, then please do get in touch. We love to hear your thoughts. You can find the details in the description below this video. Please receive our closing blessing. Lord Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for all that we have heard and that you've spoken into our lives. We pray that as we go out this week, Lord, that we will be lights and beacons for you, that we can put what we have learnt into practice. We pray a blessing upon us all as we go about our lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen.